Hey guys, welcome back to Panel by Panel. I'm, I'm Matthew. It's been 84 years since I've uploaded. And I'm Donnie, so. <laughs> <laughs> so today we're reviewing Parasite. It's a sci-fi horror manga written and illustrated by Hitoshi Iwaki yeah. and published in Afternoon Magazine from 1988 to 1995. Yeah, so this is, uh, you know, it's a pretty, it's a pretty popular horror manga like i know it has an anime i haven't actually seen it but like even today it's very it's very very popular and still super relevant actually two live action versions of the movie came out in japan in 2014 and 2015 oh wow i actually didn't know that yeah what does it mean to be a human (laughs) what is a monster and other things in gray area the manga clearly one of us took notes and one of us did (laughs) it So basically, it's a story of an alien species that was born to eradicate humans because we're polluting the planet and we suck in general. So they come in and their plan is to invade our brains, but some of the parasites don't get to the brain because earphones sometimes, I guess. And then also dogs, like in the first one. Some of them fail. Um, But basically, Meiji and Shinji learn to coexist and... Shinji decides to fight parasites after a few personal losses and stuff and because he believes it's the right thing to do even though that becomes kind of a weird gray area for him as well. So so basically Shinji's just your normal like high school boy and he's hanging out and then these these dandelions fly fall from the sky all over the place and a little worm comes out of him and you see the worm go into a few things you see a few different worms one goes into a dog yeah, that's the first thing. Yeah, one, one goes into, like, a guy, and he's like, ee. Like, ooh. He's like, ee, ooh. Yeah. That's some sh- that's some look, awesome commentary. Look at the babe. faces he makes and tell me if they're not appropriate, dude. The faces are extremely awesome. I love that. I love that first parasite. Yeah, exactly. So he was he, my favorite. So it's super accurate. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> and then one tries to go into your boy's ear, but he has headphones on. So it's like, wow, I guess I'll go into your nose. And then he wakes up, he's like, ah, it's a snake. And he grabs it, and then it goes into his hand, and then he ties a cord around his like, bicep so it can't get further up his arm because he feels strangled with him. And he's like, oh, was it a dream? Is this real life? Is this just fantasy? Yeah, in, in general, any regular parasite, because they can sense each other, the parasites. So any regular parasite sees him, and they're like, oh, you, you didn't get the brain. Let me put you out of your misery. And he always try to, like, kill uh, Shinji at first. So then... Uh, Migi, which is his parasite, his right hand. Migi means right hand, I think. That's right. Um, so Migi will like. Oh, they can like. They have like a rubber, kind of like a rubber like. They they can like freely transform it. They can harden the skin, turn into like blades. You know, the dog parasite. There's like a the first parasite he fights is a dog, and the dog can like grow wings. Um, yeah, it's just like. Uh, you know, the parasites don't have, like, emotions. It's pretty, it's pretty interesting. Yeah. So the entire, throughout the entire manga, we follow Shinji and Migi. Migi. I thought his name was Miji for the entire time. I looked it up on Google Translate. I was incorrect. Well, I mean, it could be Miji. Migi. I mean, Miji. I like Miji better. It's cuter. He's, uh, he's too cute for that. Like Migi. <laughs> well, I guess you just have shitty taste and stuff. <laughs> but, 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 but anyway, but who, but who cares is okay. what I'm saying. So anyway, so we follow Shinji and Migi uh, throughout their journey. They're killing parasites. And Shinji struggles with his humanity because it's slowly fading from his eyes as he merges with his parasite. Yeah, a lot, a lot of the first part of the manga is just Shinji learning to coexist with me and then also defending himself from parasites that try to come at him. So there are a lot of times where like there'll be a parasite coming at him and he'll have to escape or or one one attack the school. Um, There's like this teacher, well she's a parasite, but she- To me, yeah, Kazuko or to Mora Reiko. Yeah, so she like, she, she's really interested in like human parasite hybrids. Um, so she has a kid with another parasite. Mr. A. Yeah, Mr. A. And then she's also really interested in Sinji because, uh, because, you know, he's like a parasite hybrid. Um, and then Mr. A's like, man, I gotta kill that guy. I'm not sure why. Just because he thinks he's an abomination or something. He thinks he's a threat. But I think to me, his story arc was probably one of the best ones. 
Yeah, I, I feel like her arc had a really natural conclusion to the story. Yes, and then really and then did. what what came on at like the very end was kinda like tacked on. Like I I actually did not like the ending. It was You didn't? Well, no, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it yeah, later. We'll about but that. anyway. Okay, so characters. Who is your favorite? Who is your least favorite? I know who are my least favorite characters. Why don't you go first? Guess who they are. You go first. But guess who my least favorite characters are? Uh M- Murano? Yes. Really? fucking hate Murano. God damn it. Like, I understand what her purpose is in the manga, and I appreciate it. She's Shinji's last connection to his humanity. And the farther he drifts away from her, the farther he drifts away from his his humanness. But god damn it. Are you really Shinji? Are you, are you really? You didn't go to the movies with me? Oh, I can't believe you're changing. You're stronger. Why are you so brutal? Well, he wasn't brutal when he jumped out of building to save your ass from Mamata. He, his mother fucking gets eaten by a parasite. Give him a goddamn break. Well, no one knows that. It it's... doesn't matter. That's enough. His dad was really badly injured. His parents go on like a trip and then his mom gets taken over by the parasite and then the parasite tries to, tries to kill his dad and then she thinks that the dad's going to return home because she found out that he was still alive. So she goes back home, and Shinji's there. And, and you know, Miki knows it's a parasite, but Shinji's like, mom, Right, that day, Miki learned about the human power of denial. <laughs> but that actually was one of my favorite parts of the manga. That was a good part. It was very sad. Like, essentially, the parasite kills Shinji, so Miki has to, like... Well, she pierces his heart. It's a big hole. She, it's a big hole. Yeah. It's well, only, he's not dead. So Mi- Migi has to, like, turn into his heart, too. So now now he has even more Migi in him, and that's when he starts to really... Right. Like, oh, he gets a lot stronger. What happens is that um, Migi is trying to, like, plug up his heart and make it, like, not stop yeah. and get, like, food <laughs> and water into him. And what happens is the blood rushing uh, washes what was too strong for um, Migi to handle... So it washes away 30% of him. So 30% of him kind of gets absorbed into into Shinji's bloodstream. So Shinji's now superhuman. Yeah, his abilities, his uh, hearing, his reflexes, his speed, his strength all increase like tenfold. Yeah. But he also becomes a lot colder. Uh, there's yeah. definitely a scene with Murano where he finds a dead dog, in the, like a dying dog in the middle of the street. And it dies in his arms and he's watching it. And uh, he's just looking at it. Oh, it's dead. Murano sees him and... He just grabs it by the yeah. by the back and throws it out. And she's like, what the hell are you doing? He's like, oh, is that not sanitary? And it's like, it's not a dog. It's just a thing in the shape of a dog right yeah, now. Yeah, they make a point of him, like, not being able to cry. Right, like at Kana's um, funeral. You know, or when his mom dies. Uh, and he, you know, at the end, he kind of regains that. But yeah, I think Murano's pretty important. I like Murano personally. I think Murano is important. I think she's annoying. Just, just It doesn't matter that you want her to go to the movies with him. I think Kano was pointless as well. Oh. She has the unexplained psychic child. Oh, do you want to get into my least favorite character? <laughs> is it Kana? Yes. She has no explanation for her stupid ESP psychic powers. Alright, so, so my least favorite character is Kana. So Kana is a girl who goes to a nearby school. Not the same one as Shinji and Murano. But basically, she's hanging out with this group of delinquents from the other school. And they're beating and she, up a kid, right? They're, they're beating up a kid. And Shinji comes and he's like, hey, cut it out. And, you know, Shinji's like superhuman. Right. And they make eye contact. She was like, ooh, there's something inhuman about him. Well, because she was like strong guys. And then, like, she she looked at him. She sensed, you know. She sensed the but humanity you, you slowly could, fading out of him. But you could argue that's part of her ability. Like, maybe that was the first inkling of her ability. Um, so, also, yeah, she keeps coming to see Shinji. And, you know, they have kind of, like, a friendship going on. And, like, Murano gets really... At this point, there was a point where Murano and Shinji kind of, like, stopped seeing each other. So she's like, oh, I have a chance. Uh, basically, what's going on is that she has the ability to sense parasites. Um, so then she's hanging out outside every day. And she's, like, sensing the parasites. Like, oh, this person's parasite. She runs into Mimata yeah. because of it. There, there's a guy at the school who uh, who is a parasite. He's just keeping an eye on Shinji. For Tamiya. Yeah, so she so she's like, oh, Sinji's nearby. Let me run up and say hi. And she goes around the corner, and it's that guy. And she's like, what the hell is going on? And he grabs her, like, how how did you do the thing? Because she like he can sense her brain waves, but they're weak. Yeah. And um, it's never explained because she dies, and it's really funny because she goes, she senses a parasite, but she accidentally goes to one of the parasites' 
feeding places, which they call restaurants. Yeah. And she's like, I'm going to go. Even though Shinji tells her, like, don't leave your house. Don't leave until I come get you. Yeah. Please don't. She's like, no, I'm going to go. Because she gets uh, murked by a, by a parasite that's feeding there. And she does remember this embarrassing sex dream that she had of Shinji. That was yeah, so... Yeah, like, th- there's a whole dream of Shinji would be, like, a white knight and coming to save her from monsters or something. Yeah. Uh, but unfortunately, she dies in Shinji's arms and... Unfortunately. You know, she, Shinji's, you know, understandably upset. But, like, her death is just kind of sudden. I always felt like, first of all, her character design, artistically, uh-huh. I felt like was disgusting. I don't know what it was about her. Like, something about her hair, disgusting. And then, like, her character to me always seem really kind of like pointless like she's just kind of hanging around here's an extra girl oh she has psychic powers that yeah. are that they're, they're never used to like do anything yeah she just kind of she's kind of there i part of me feel like that's the reason why she dies just because he's like i gotta abort this character real quick. like man this is going really well but i have no idea what to do with this specific person yeah. it doesn't make sense he does include another psychic person at the end but that person's a serial killer he's not psychic but but yeah basically that's not a useful skill uh, yeah, so so she she dies really suddenly, and you know he's at the funeral and stuff. Uh, and then Morano, you know, and then it goes goes back to thing to him and Morano like, oh, what what about Tana? Is he not telling me about you know because she knew about the parasites? But, um, it was boring. The unnecessary love triangle was unnecessary and long and dumb. Now let's get on to a good character. Oh yeah, so what's your favorite character? To me, yeah. To me, it was the fucking best, man. She was the coolest parasite. She was the strongest. She had me at, like, the first eye contact between her and Shinji. You know, like, Maslow's hierarchy of needs? You know, like, it first starts off with, like, basic survival and then goes all the way up to self-actualization? That's what happens to her. She starts off just, you know, feeding. That's how all um, parasites start out, right? And then she moves up to thinking about what her purpose in life is and what her existence means and and eventually developing value for human life and life of her child. And it was just like, oh, it's just so well done. It's so good. And I was just so happy, especially when she fought all those three parasites and ran into the city without oh, her head. Oh, yeah. That was so, so funny. To me, your fights is really creative in the story because, uh, you know, they, they explain a little bit about the like some parasites have the ability to split off so like Miji for example can temporarily split off from, from Shinji uh, but at, the longer he's separated the weaker he gets because he needs blood he needs human blood so Tamiya separates a part of her body during the fight where it like drills into the other parasites that are trying to kill her um, and then like it's absorbing the, the blood from them and controlling the host body so like basically you know the other parasites are in the head so it's controlling everything below the head and they can attack the other parasites Meanwhile, her main body's like running around. It's so funny. It's so good though. It's and, really creative. And I and I love how and she she doesn't give a shit. She just like ha- laughing her ass off. Like and then she like changes her face, and then two guys start hitting on her. So she like splits her head. She's like, yeah, I'm pretty, but there's nothing inside my head. And then she <laughs> runs away. She's freaking hilarious. Like, you, you really got the impression that she's some kind of like genius or something. She is considered like the strongest and one of the most intelligent parasites. But yeah, you know, throughout the story, she's really one of the, like, I think she's, like, the main villain for most of the story, if you could consider her that. I mean, it does. Um, she does get, like, a bunch of people to follow Miji, Miji, uh, Shinji, because yeah. he's, she's interested in him as a person. But, but she's, like, uh, maybe not, like, a villain, but she's, like, the antagonist, because she's, like, the opposing mastermind, she's a parasite, um, and she gets pregnant, you know? She's definitely a vegetarian. She does make this one line, which I think that's why people think that this is like a call for vegetarianism. She actually says, I didn't want to bring this up, but don't y'all coexist with, you know, animals and you still eat them and kill them? And he's like, that's different. (laughs) I could debate with you about that if you really want me to. I mean... Do you agree with that? uh, Because personally, I feel like... uh, And don't don't call pee on me, please. But I feel like as, as the... The dominant species on the planet you know we we can do that and then like the parasites come but then they're the dominant species but are they though because we fucking destroy all of them so i don't know if they're the that was species. really mean though i mean parasites are definitely stronger but we, we kind of like annihilate we could the humans in the story kind of annihilate all the parasites but one but i'm sure like like once they know what they're dealing with they could have even taken down that guy if they really needed to like oh uh, you're talking about the goat yeah, the guy, the guy with like 
a there, million parasites there, in him. There's a guy with five parasites, so one for each part of the body, but we'll get to that later. Anyway, to Mia, anyway. So she is, uh, sorry to get off topic, guys, but she is, uh, it's very good makeup. It really, like, even though I'm going to complain about it a lot, um, like, with all its flaws, I think it's still, like, definitely a super classic, one of a kind, ultra mega, really, really good. Yeah, so Tamiya has a baby, and they're asking, you know, her and Mr. A before Mr. A goes berserk, was like, you know, I had a baby with this guy, what do you think the baby's gonna be? It's human. And it's, yeah, it's full human, because they both are using human hosts. So, and she's raising this baby as an experiment, um, and she's kind of like... <laughs> she's kind of awful. She grabs it, like, by the back, too. Yeah, she's, she's like, shut up, and the baby stops crying, and then she turns to the lady, and she's like, see how well I've trained it. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Oh, so she doesn't know how to like change her face when she laughs, so she has to practice in the mirror, laughing yeah. and like smiling at the same but, time. But she has some genuine laughter, which is really a hint that the, the parasites are developing emotions. Yeah, they're definitely merging. I think that's the thing that, that like yeah. they're like influencing each other. And by the end, she definitely does display like maternal instincts, like yeah. before. And well, this is the thing with the. There's like a private investigator named Saito, and it's like a whole thing. He's not one of my favorite characters. I was upset with him. I didn't like him. I don't like him either. He's a coward. Yeah, um, he's such a pussy. But, Jesus. But with Tamiya, she's definitely she's probably the best character in the manga. She's just so interesting. You know what I mean? Oh, but at the end, like the way her story ended was like awesome and beautiful and amazing, and I loved it so much. Oh, so let me let me try and think of my favorite character because to be honest with you, like. None of them really stood out. Like, I like Tamiya a lot, but I don't think I would call out, like, my favorite character. It I could be Miji. Maybe Miji. I think he's fucking great. Uh, but I don't know what to say about that. He's just, like, you know, he's the main character, and he starts off really, like, uh, you know, matter-of-fact, um, very uh, pragmatic, you know? He's not, you know, he's like, this is the way we should, like... Like, there's a part where Mr. A's invading the school, he's like, hey, if we use all your friends as meat shields, we could probably kill them super easily. Right. And she's like, eh, I kind of don't want to do that. <laughs> nah. Um, and then, you know, he, he saves Shinji from dying, and then he has to, like, he'll have to go to sleep. But yeah, so, Mi- 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 probably my favorite character. Mimi's a good character. Yeah, I liked Uda. Uda, the guy that he met on the island who never stopped crying. With oh, the parasite with, with in his jaw. I thought he was kind of pointless. I don't know. I liked him. Like, I liked him. It's just, like, I feel like they should have done something with him, and they didn't do anything by the end. I mean... Like, he's there for the one part, right? He's there for the part. He basically he helps. He comes back. <laughs> he comes back, but he doesn't really do anything. You know, he doesn't help find anyone. He's kind of there. He cries. So, essentially, there's a, the part where, like, the mom gets taken away to Parasite. So, Shinji's guarding his dad's uh, hospital room, and while he's there, he meets another, like, half-Parasite, half-guy. So, this guy, this Parasite made it to the map. But he was drowning, uh, Uda. Uh-huh. So so he was like, oh, well, I gotta save him because if he dies, I'm gonna be screwed. So he extends, he makes the mouth stretch to the surface, you know? So he got um, stuck there. Yeah, so he got stuck there. He's cute. He's not, I think, I think I like what they do with the secondary characters. They're secondary. It's not like, you remember Lovely Complex where every fucking character oh. needed, like, their own backstory and their own, like... Well, well the problem with that, Mega, is that... There's like, no plot. No, it's like towards the end they were like, oh, all these characters, each one gets a special episodic side story that we're going to cover one right after the other, rapid fire. And it's like, eh, Morano and Shinji at one point have sex. Gross. Uh, I thought it was funny. Unnecessary and gross. I thought it was funny. They were really getting into what it means to be human, you know? Fucking? Yeah, because it was all the passion, you know, all that feeling. I think that's what that was supposed to be. And after, after the sex, they have like, you know, they're like, <laughs> like a good orgasm. I didn't need to see Murano in the middle of fucking. Is what I'm saying. They have like panels of her face. Oh, was that just like? Was that was that too much for your virgin eyes? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you motherfucker. Anyway, I thought it was pointless. Right. Well, do you want to move on? We want to move on to the ending. I, I consider like the ending when the military comes in and like throughout that. Yeah, so... It's the last 14 chapters. Just to, like, give you guys, like, uh, a brief summary. Basically, the whole... So, the first half could be, like, when Shinji is, you know, just getting used to Migi. And I would say halfway point is when he... Uh, when Migi has to fuse with him mm-hmm. to save him. Yeah. And then after that, what really happens is the uh, 
the government starts cracking down on parasites because you know all these all these like missing peoples and then like in the beginning they were like uh, there were a lot of uh, you know brutal brutally slaughtered corpses and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so in the neighboring town there is a politician uh, whose name I do not remember. It's too late. I don't remember. I know it was like hero something, but I don't. I don't remember. Don't, you don't remember. Well, I don't know. He's the mayor of the adjacent like yeah. city. So the mayor of the adjacent city is uh, a lot of his chair and maybe him himself are made up of parasites. Like Shinji goes there, he's like, "Whoa, why are there so many parasites here? Let's get the hell out." They're like super into environmentalism, by the way. Yeah, they're so totally it, vegans. It's, it's like a green party. Definitely so, a green party. So basically what's going on is that, you know, because par- parasites are setting up, like, they're trying to get the government, you know, really establish themselves, help out other parasites. Right, that's how they um, got restaurants set up? Yeah. Uh, Where so they that, feed. Yeah, so, so what ends up happening is uh, the military, you know, there's a whole thing with, like, a private detective. Basically, Tamura Raiko is a private detective to spy on Shinji and then Shinji sees him you know and he, I mean he sees Shinji doing the parasite type thing with Miki yeah. and then Miki's like hey let's kill him and she's like no he's a human uh, but basically they like uh, it's okay they kill her parasites kill his family so. <laughs> so they capture the guy him and Shaba or excuse me him and Uda the other parasite half parasite guy and they you know basically like hey you know, watch it and like is is the person who hired you this person? And then he's like, yeah. And he's like, well, she's a parasite too. So then he starts spying on her. And then, you know, the the council's like, hey, this guy you hired is getting out of hand. Uh, we're going to kill him. She's like, okay. Yeah, she's like, okay, whatever. But then they say, we're also going to kill Shinji. And even though she disagrees with that, she has to accept it because she's very, like, she's also s- still very logical at this point. Uh, the, yeah. the Saito, who is the private investigator. Right has an entire he's one of the reasons that like the government had like a big crackdown at city hall uh because he wrote a testament after his family was yeah. murdered so so the parasites helped it was a part of to murder him but he's not there so they just murder his family i guess yeah to me is not cool with it to me yeah. is like you guys are fucking stupid saito steals to me his baby and uh yeah he he meets uh her at a park with the baby right and he's like, you know, you killed my family. It's your fault that they're dead. And he's like, you probably wouldn't even care if I killed your child. Because you don't care about anything. But if I can make you feel 1% of the misery that I feel, then I'll be fine. And he's about to kill the baby. And Tamiya kills him. Yeah, Tamiya. Yeah, and saves him. the baby. And he was very surprised. And she was like, yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she, she told uh, Shinji meet her at the park. You know, yeah. and then me and you see like I'm gonna go, and then Miggy's like, uh, I'm interested. Let's go. Miggy's <laughs> a very curious <laughs> yeah. little baby. So they have there, they have like a meetup where it's uh, it's Tamara and Shinji, and then all the police are there because you know, what's his face? Saito filled out a police report about the monsters because they wanted to follow the monsters. Right. They also found his body, and he was like, Oh, she's wearing white. She has a baby. The baby has my blood on it. Yeah. So um, they they find her standing with Shinji, and. She talks about how she thinks... I don't know. She just talks about, like, what's her purpose? What's... You know, she figured it out or whatever. I don't think she says exactly what it is, but she talks yeah. about how she's basically self-actualized and yeah, how parasites can coexist with humans. Yeah, they can eat human food and, and survive. But a part that I really liked was, um... Like, she, she talks about, like, what she would have done if she found the answer. It's a really good line. She's like, uh... And all I would have done if I found out would be, like... Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, what else is she supposed to do with that? But yeah, then she gets lit up by the police. The police, the police shoot her 10,000 times. And, and then, in order to protect her child, she kind of covers it. She actually yeah. implores Shinji to come to her by changing into his mom's face. Yeah. Because she, she needed Shinji to take the baby. Uh, and it, di- it reminded him of when his mother... Mm-hmm got burned because she has a his mom used to have a scar on his on her arm because she got burned and she didn't even notice you know she was so concerned about Shinji yeah, she that stopped, she didn't she notice she stops a pot with oil falling on she like and grabs it and the oil falls on her arm to me it was so concerned about the welfare of her child that she didn't care about sacrificing herself and it was so beautiful <laughs> it was so sad and heartbreaking and that's actually when Shinji begins to cry again 
yeah. holding the baby, and it was really sad. Also, Morano got the part too. <laughs> she just uh, she saw Shinji on the way. She She's like, just him. there for no reason. What do you want her to do? But this but this whole part leads to I think in City Hall with the parasites there and the military. Yeah, so the military comes and they're like, "Hey, there's a guy with a shotgun on the roof." They we're lie. Just, yeah, they lie. They're like, "We're gonna start escorting you guys out." in groups of seven and then they have an x-ray that's when they use they also use the the murderer who's like a, yeah. he can just he can sense parasites that's they, it they have a serial killer who can tell like kind of who other killers are I guess so that's he, knows, he knows who parasites are um, so they're using him but like basically they lead out the like people in groups of seven and they scan with the x-rays and whenever you can't see someone's head on the x-ray it's a parasite so they walk up to that person and they're like hey Bow, bow. Yeah, shotgun right in the chest and it kills the parasite that's it I mean the parasites kind of start to figure out what's happening like super yeah. quickly yeah and uh, the humans the military don't give a fuck they even say it they're like they're not concerned with protecting humans they just want to get rid of parasites yeah um and it's it's kind of sad. Uh, they killed the they they find the mayor and they kill him. You find out he's human. Yeah, the mayor that, is was human. So that was so cool. Because really cool. parasites are there to kill off humans. Yeah. Uh, so you believe they're like a, a, an antidote. It's the Matrix thing. It's the thing with the Matrix. I've never seen the Matrix. All right. Well, there's, there's a part where Mr. Anderson's <laughs> like, you know, humans are a cancer, and we are the cure, or something like that. <laughs> and this thing, I guess, is kind of accurate. We are polluting the earth. They don't want to save the earth for the earth. The earth's gonna be fine. They want to make sure they have a nice place to live. Yeah, basically. Their own habitat. <laughs> yeah, basically. So you know that that whole thing goes down. There's there's a super super strong parasite that we mentioned before, Goto. Yeah. There you go. Um. So essentially, he's a he's five different parasites, but the one in the head controls the four other parasites. No, well, five other parasites. So mm. six parasites. I don't know. He's a lot of parasites. There's a lot of parasites. Yeah, there's there's they, more than one. There's one for each one. I remember there was five when the other guy, when Sanji had control. Because I feel like they switch out control. Oh, because Goto was sleeping, though. Yeah. So they yeah. some of them lay dormant. So Sanji could only control the arms. Mm-hmm. Uh, and at that point, there were three. But then the other guy takes over. Um, like, the, the dominant personality. Mm-hmm. And he is able to control all the limbs very, very accurately. And he... Uh, He's like the ultimate parasite. They try shooting him up. Doesn't work. He hardens his skin and then he shoots back out the bullets at them and stuff. So good. He he kills literally every single member of the military. All by himself. And then he like jumps out to Shinji. I'm going to kill you, but I'm tired today. So I'll come back for you later. And he does. And uh, they have this fight uh, in the woods and it's so sad because Migi, he sacrifices himself. For Shinji, and so, it's just so sad. And then Shinji like meets up with a grandma, and she's really yeah, nice. He, and he starts saying they're in the country, like not in the city. So he starts staying with like a nearby grandma, and he helps for groceries stuff. He's missing his arm now. Yeah, it's just like a stump. Um, but but then some guys in the town they're like, hey, I saw a corpse in the woods. Is is like a car crash because they threw cars at each other. Yeah. And then he's like, oh, there's a thing in the woods. So they go to. Uh, they go to, you know, they're going to go and try and kill it. It like, kills all of them, obviously. Um, and, then, and then Shinji has to try and fight it without... Miji. Without Miji. Or Miji. Miji sorry. sorry. Uh, <laughs> but it's actually a lot easier to hide because, you know, parasites can sense each other brain waves. But now he doesn't have Miji on him anymore. The guy can't, like, sense where he is, so he hides. And that doesn't work. And then he tries to jump down from the tree with, and like, that a sharp work. branch. That doesn't work. We find out parasites don't like fire. Oh yeah, because their um, um, their cells get all chaotic and stuff, and they yeah. don't like that. Kind of, kind of like the things, which makes sense. It's probably semi inspired by that. What do you think about? It? But I think what happens is uh, Shinji ends up kind of like on a pile of rust and shit. Yeah, it's, and it's, then it's burnt garbage. So it's burnt garbage. So parasites don't like pollution. So yeah. what he does is he takes like an iron pipe or like a, a right, right. thing, and he like shoves it into where. Um, Miji had originally created like right. it's like it's like Mi- Migi sacrificed himself to, to show where the weak point of Goto was like he has like a, a spot where it's like it's unprotected uh-huh. uh huh so he shoves in the, the iron bar in there and he poisoned his body yeah and then all the other parasites are like ah uh, nah yeah they start bailing <laughs> on him and then we find out Migi got absorbed into Goto like, yeah he's one of the parasites in there so Goto goes to kill Sinji swings the blade arm and then Shinji catches it with his little stump like because he still has a little bit of uh, Migi cells 
Uh-huh. So he catches it, and then he reabsorbs Migi, and, oh. then he, and then he kills the shit out of Goto. There's a part where he like where he's like considering not doing it, where he's like, oh, he's giving everything he has to live. It's more like the should he let the natural order do it or should he? Nah, I gotta do it. Ha! I killed him. <laughs> Ching. And and that is where the natural ending of the story should happen. But <laughs> there's a thing with the serial killer from yeah. earlier. So essentially, uh, you know, they graduate high school, and Miggy's like, "Hey, man, uh, you know." He's peacing we, out. We had a great. We had a great thing <laughs> he going breaks on. up with him. Yeah. He's so, like, but listen, I learned everything I want to learn. I really am going to be dur- dormant for a long time now. Probably uh, for the rest of your life. So. Probably for the rest of your life. But I had a great time, and you know, peace out, man. It's not you. It's me. He's like, I'm uh, just kind of, I'm kind of done with this situation right now. I hope you, I hope you really think of our whole thing as nothing but a dream. And then Shinji, you know, wakes up because they're talking in a dream. And Shinji wakes up. He's like, How could I? Need he's like, You dickhead! How am I supposed to forget you? Yeah, because they're friends. I mean, um, yeah, and also he's a parasite that grew out of his hand. Like, I wouldn't forget that. Oh, uh, but but then he, you know, makes up with Murano. He's trying to get the same class as Murano, but he missed a lot of school because you know. Cause the, stuff. He was a bit busy during yeah, his school like, year. So, so like he's he's a dumbass, but he's, you know he's both trying. And then he sees that serial killer guy, and then the serial killer guy abducts gets M- Murano. Murano. That's the only reason she was there for the entire story. No, for this part, yes, it is. It's just that this part is fucking dumb. And then like they bring him to a, the ceiling, and he's like debating with him. I don't have a parasite anymore. I know you do. No, I don't. No, I don't. What's humanity? What happens? Murano's yeah. like, just let him kill me because I know that Shinji's not a not a not a, like evil because he values human life. You're the real monster. Blah blah blah. Yeah. And it's just a kind of like unnecessary ham-fisted dialogue. It really is. And then like like he, we got it before. He, he goes to like save Murano, and then the guy shoves her off the roof of the building, and he punches the shit out of the guy. The guy gets knocked out. Yeah. Or maybe killed. I'm not even sure. I don't. Okay. But, uh, but then Murano's off the side of the building. Shinji can't catch her. He's like, oh, boo-hoo, oh, boo-hoo, boo-hoo. He has a dream with uh, Migi. Like a daydream. Which yeah, is like, like... it's so strange, like a hallucination. And then he opens his eyes like, oh, he, he caught her. So I guess the arm stretched out and grabbed her and brought her back. Yeah, I thought but it was like a, a Spider-Man 2 thing. Like just, where, <laughs> where he was going to just lose her and then that's it. Well, his also, life sucks. I think he's still like superhuman. He could have just jumped off. Like, he's not as... He's not as powerful as he but, was. But, like, before Migi was sleeping, like, he was still really fast. I think he still is. Still, I don't know. He still has the cells. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that was the end. I just thought the ending was kind of lame. It kind of felt like the story didn't really have anywhere else it wanted to go. So he needed to, like, make, like, an ending. Like, an ending. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's all right. Like, the journey is definitely... Worth a, it? A plus, like, S rank journey really good it's just the ending's kind of not even bad just kind of really strange choice it's it's all right it doesn't end strong is what we're trying yeah, to get at but i feel like if you play that out a little bit more uh the part with the baby much more natural ending point the part with where he kills what's his face much much more natural ending point you know this, what I mean? this, this manga had a lot of endings it's really, it's really good, good. It, it asks a lot of interesting questions you know kind of like frankenstein where it's like can you hold a creature that's more than human to human standards, you know? Right, like, yeah. Like, could cows be like, yo, what's up? You don't even know they can't. So why would we be able to do something better than us? <laughs> yeah, what's like up? a creature like Frankenstein, which, you know, hides in a ceiling. Like, you know, Migi. Oh, there's actually a lot of parallels here. Like, because Frankenstein, he hides in an attic. He learns French in, like, a day, a month, maybe. Like, that's incredible. Yeah. Migi learns Japanese in a day, you yeah. know? So can you really hold these things to human standards when they're so much more advanced than us? Yeah, Migi even says uh, once he steals money, and he's just like, I don't care. I don't hold myself to the same. Yeah. He's like, we got to respect each other, and I don't have these. He basically has, like, alien diplomatic immunity. But there's also, like, the idea of, like, okay, so parasites do all, like, they can do all the stuff, right? Mm-hmm. So they can do everything that humans can do and more. Are they more human? One from, like, getting a bulletproof vest. And then what are you going to do? <laughs> you know I mean? Also, we pride ourselves on being on the top of the food chain. Yeah. What happens when someone else is at the top of the food chain? Yeah, I mean, that, that's like a thing that's really popular. Like, you know, the next step. Like, something that preys on us. And like, oh, what do we do? Blah, blah, blah. I, I do feel like there's just so many of us. And we have so many tools that it's hard to, like, eradicate humans. It would but, be uh, difficult, but it's definitely possible. Yeah. If they tried hard enough. <laughs> but, like... I wouldn't blame them to me. It, it also asks the question, because, you know, like, humans... We have free will. We have a society, a culture. Mm-hmm. Um, it would have to be like some kind of either like a mindless monster, or it would have to be a monster that just like disagrees with humans. 
Because, like, uh, otherwise you're going to find, like, sympathetic ones. But it's definitely like, just people. ingrained in their nature. Like, well, yeah, but they can go against their nature. Like, uh, like towards the end, it definitely says a lot of parasites are adapting to you. They're just temporary ripo. You know? It, it's just, like, you're going to find sympathetic. If there's a lot of them, there's definitely going to be, like, a small percent that are sympathetic. Uh, so, so you want to, like... You know, any, anyway, uh, to, this is getting too deep. Get too deep. Uh, I'm gonna give this nine out of ten candy canes. I give this nine point five out of ten snow cones. Snow cones? This is too serious. I want to do daily shot about sex stuff. So I'm gonna come back later. Goodbye. Hey, have a good time, Eddie, for listening, guys. Have a good night. Later.